I got a Canon R6. And I'm going to tell you why I got that instead of the R5. And in the next video, I'll compare it to the OMD EM1X from Olympus. Stick around. If you watched my first video, you know that I just recently bought an OMD EM1X, so why did I buy a Canon R6 now? Well, the short of it is, I was questioning my own argument. I knew I was going to buy into the RF mount system eventually, so I decided I might as well give it a shot, and... Well, see if I made the right choice. If you recall, I bought the Olympus EM1X for the 40 to 150, 80 to 300mm equivalent lens, because I wanted a little bit more reach than I was getting with my Leica Q2. But why stop at 300mm equivalent? With the Olympus Pro 150-400 f4.5 pushed out months from now, I turned to the R6. Rather than the 70 200 f4 or the 2.8 I mentioned in the earlier video, I ended up going with the 100-500 f4.5 7.1 L IS USM, which if you're not familiar with Canon's lenses, means it's got its ultra-fast, quick, silent, ultrasonic motor uh, image stabilization, which works in conjunction with the in-body image stabilization of the R6, and is part of Canon's professional L line. The lens is priced about the same as fellow L lenses, the Canon RF 70-200 f2.8, but it's a couple of inches longer and a bit more than half a pound heavier. The recent, recently released 70-200 f4 is cheaper, weighs about half that at 100-500. The 100-500 is also only one of three lenses that's compatible with the RF teleconverter, the others being the 600 and 800 f11 primes. So let's first compare it to its attention-stealing brother, the R5. The R5 is in many ways the successor to the 5D line, which makes it reasonable to consider the R6 as a successor to the 6D line. In fact, both of the RF models are a bit more than a $1,000 premium over the DSLR versions. The R6 actually pricing about $1,100 more, while the R5 prices about a little higher premium, $1,400 more. And the spec sheet for the R5 is amazing, bumping the resolution from 30 megapixels of the 5D Mark IV to 45 meg megapixels, while snapping 12 frames per second mechanically, or 20 frames per second electronically. The R5 is also 62 grams lighter than the 5D. Now the R6, while 58 grams lighter than the R5, is basically the same weight as the 6D. It's also only 20 megapixels compared to the 45 megapixels of the R5, or even 26 megapixels of the 6D, and it doesn't shoot any faster than the R5. Still, just 12 frames per second mechanically and 20 frames per second electronically. So why did I get the R6 and not the R5? Well, noise. The R6 has half as many pixels, so effectively each receptor on the sensor is collecting twice as much light, and that's translates to basically an entire extra usable stop of ISO. The R6 also takes dual UHS-2 SDXC cards, while the R5 needs a CF Express Type B to hit its maximum performance. Now, it's always questionable and heated when arguing whether the higher resolution version of the same generation sensor is actually noisier, when taking into account upsizing the lower, cleaner version, which exacerbates noise or downsizing the high resolution image, which averages out the noise. But if you're planning on primarily pushing the higher ISO, you will certainly be losing at least some of that resolution benefit that you would get with the R5. And the difference in storage media is a big drawback in my opinion. Sure, the R5 can take 8K video until it catches fire, but the R6 has the internals of Canon's flagship 1DX Mark III SLR, and that's closer to what I was looking. So what do I think of the R6? Well. Canon's gotten a lot more complicated and powerful over the last 15 years since I got my first 20D. There are a lot of things that Canon's done great with the RF system, and they've released several variants of EF adapters, starting with a basic $100 adapter and pricier models that have drop-in filters. My first interchangeable lens camera was a 20D, and I shot a pair of them for seven years until switching to Micro Four Thirds in the Olympus OMD EM5. So I still have a small collection of EF and EFS lenses, which work flawlessly on the RF system, better than mixing and matching in the Micro Four Thirds between Panasonic Olympus bodies with high-end glass, for those of you who recall my comments and the adapted lenses on the most recent video. I even attached my non-USM 75-300 to for some test shots, and it worked, albeit slowly and loudly. It's clear the R6 pair is much nicer with quicker focusing modern Canon lenses, either RF or EF USM models. The R6 does have excellent high ISO, but admittedly in real life I'm faced with the realization that usable in a pinch still isn't the same as a good noise floor. It's usable much higher in scenes I'd argue up until its non-extended top of 51,200, but it still has a large, less than thrilled range if you peek in, so maybe just don't do that, don't pixel peep. It's really a great camera to use, and there isn't a lot about which to complain. The ergonomics are excellent, the autofocus is quick, and the face tracking quickly picks up people ducking and reappearing behind cover. 
switched to animals and used to track animals, it was also quick to lock on. However, when there were obstacles or cover, the camera had trouble locking in, and the camera would often select the brush or leaves instead of a face. Switching to spot, or even manually pre-focusing if you knew where the subject would be, was the best, if not only, workaround. Although, even with spot focusing, if the camera focused too far from the subject, the quickest fix was often to just manually throw the focus back into the right neighborhood. Otherwise, it just never found the subject. On the subject of the lens itself, my only RF native glass, the 100-500, the lens is amazingly sharp on its own. At 4.5, it's not significantly darker than the 70-200 f4, but with teleconverters, can go either to 700 with the 1.4x or to 1,000 with the 2x if needed. Unfortunately, the lens needs to be zoomed out 60%, I to the 300 millimeter mark before attaching the teleconverter, which is a tad frustrating for packing the camera, not to mention it reduces flexibility when shooting. It is close focusing and it's remarkably sharp and may prefer to be mated to the R5 because of that. And while it's not light, it's definitely hand holdable. Also the tripod collar will rotate but isn't removable. I definitely recommend the EOS R6 if you're looking at it. The main selling points over the R5 for me are the better high noise handling and the dual UHS-2 SD card slots rather than the mix with the CF Express. The camera provides good video support when you need it, including Canon C-Log and 4K, and plenty of options to tweak the baked-in color and autofocus. And the autofocus itself is among the best in the industry. That doesn't mean it's necessarily the right camera for everyone, though. In my next video, I'll take a closer look at how it compares to the OMD EM1X and how the decision isn't necessarily so clear. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.